My name is Nicole Caruso, and I'm a director at Alexander Gray Associates. Because the gallery is closed in order to help reduce the spread of COVID-19, my colleagues at Alexander Gray created this video in which I'll speak on behalf of Ricardo Bray's artistic practice with additional audio recordings from Ricardo himself. We'll look specifically at three bodies of work, including Every Life is a Fire, Inferno Drawings, and Adrift. For more than 40 years, Ricardo Bray has created materially innovative works that question humanity's origins and its place in the world. Born in Havana, Cuba in 1955, Bray grew up during the Cuban Revolution. After graduating from art school, he joined the dynamic artistic scene in Havana that included Cuban and international artists who were committed to advancing artistic practice in Cuba, including those Bray formed close relationships with, like Ana Mendieta, Jose Badia Valdez, and Juan Francisco Elso. Bray worked briefly as an illustrator and graphic designer before exhibiting in the landmark 1981 group show, Volumen 1, at the Centro de Arte Internacional in Havana, a show that brought him widespread critical attention and ultimately provided him with the opportunity to travel and exhibit internationally while connecting with artists like Louise Chemnitzer and Jimmy Durham. In 1992, at the invitation of Belgian curator Jan Hut, Bray participated in Documenta 9 and was the first Cuban artist to do so. In 2015, Bray's inclusion in the Venice Biennale, All the World's Futures, curated by Aquine Razor, provided an international platform for exhibiting works from Every Life is a Fire. Here's Ricardo speaking from his studio in Ghent, Belgium. I hope everyone is fine in this difficult time of the pandemic. And also I hope everybody is at home to help to stop the virus. I don't go out for almost a month. Locally, I have enough material here to be quiet. And I am in my studio doing what is the best of me. The only thing I can do is bring work, art, not thinking too much. I love making art. In ongoing ontological series like Every Life is a Fire, he constructs boxes that unfold to reveal meticulously designed worlds filled with disparate yet complementary elements. At once sacred and mundane, these works play with notions of exteriority and interiority. I think a state of mind needs containers, and the boxes are containers of this state of mind. They are created in a process of recovering material like my other works, but in this case, I recover material, I recover ideas, I recover moods, I recover memories, I recover dreams. They are the container of, 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 of memories who don't belong to me. I just, I just provide the material. I just provide the, the container. It's not my memory. So, we, we approach them through the action of opening, and unfolding, and discovering, like a, the magic hat of the, of the magician. In Driftwood and Pebbles from 2014, an angelic neoclassical bust anchors the central axis of the box. Surrounded by pieces of driftwood suggesting a ceremonial funeral pyre, the melancholy figure also underscores the fleeting innocence of youth, temporality, and decay. The interior walls of the box are lined with silver paper and silk textiles bearing Baroque-inspired designs, on which accordion-style booklets unfold to reveal intimate drawings and handwritten texts that highlight Bray's interest in alchemy. In Vienna, from 2012, Bray highlights human psychology and the influence of Austrian psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. As the box's centerpiece, a stone is wrapped as if it were a small treasure, with a decorative gilded mask as a crown. Referring at once to the underworld and the sewers of the human subconscious, Bray juxtaposes a small toy toilet with other decorative objects like a lion face and an antique coin. Finally, a small notebook filled with the artist's own notes on Every Life is a Fire is tethered to one of the box's interior walls outlining each work in the series and exposing Bray's own psychology through the creative process. Titled after the philosophical principle that favors the simplest solution in any inquiry, 
Occam's Razor from 2011 playfully points to the causality dilemma of which came first. A lead egg draped with gold chains anchors the centerfold of the box, resting on two accordion-style booklets. Each booklet unfurls to present handwritten scientific texts on planetary bodies and their orbits. On each wall of the box, circular medallions, gears, and coins mirror the celestial and evoke objects of function and utility. Here is the artist describing his most recent work, Admission, which he completed in the midst of the current pandemic. I was thinking when I was making all these small things and try to find blue things I collected from over the years in different parts of the world. And I like the blue because the blue is always it's a infinitive and I have to use the, the feeling of a space, I have to use the feeling of hope and future. So I think go very well now for me <laughs> in this uh, confinement. Just as Bray's boxes raise metaphysical questions, so too do other recent series. His Inferno drawings, for example, are informed in part by Galileo's Two Lessons About Hell, a scientific treatise based on Dante's epic. Drawing parallels between divine peril and climate change, these compositions continue Bray's project challenging dualisms between fact and fiction, science and art, and the rational and irrational through the construction of images informed by both. In Inferno from 2018, Bray depicts the circles of hell that make up Dante's Inferno. Found objects like small circular gears, metal cogs, and decorative wooden ornaments are collaged and assembled on top of the drawing, adding three-dimensional rhythm and harnessing associative potential related to the intricacies of the human mind. At the center of the concentric circles that make up the drawing's composition rests a small round mirror, which invites close looking. Bray's intent is that the viewer recognizes they are at once inside the inferno while simultaneously looking out to the rest of the world. In Scrub, another work from 2018, Bray's manipulation of sanguine pigment implies both plant shrubbery as well as blood and fire. Erupting from the center of the composition are stems and flowers of a thistle plant drawn in red chalk, nestled among stream of consciousness symbols, letters, and hurried scrawl. Suggesting life forces that can be simultaneously destructive and generative, Scrub blurs the boundaries between fire as a natural element that has the capacity to protect and ravage, and blood as symbolic of human vitality and life itself. Again responding to a rapidly changing world, Ray began to craft his adrift works when he went to Cuba in 2014 after more than 20 years in exile. Observing Havana's changes, he started to produce sculptures that evinced his intense connection to his homeland, while critically reflecting on its metamorphosis. The most iconic Cuban painting of the past century was made by the artist Wilfredo Lang. The name of the painting, La Jungla. I mentioned this to emphasize how important the relationship of the Cuban people with the natural world is. When I went back to Cuba, I find out that this relationship was broken. The urgent need of the fuel during the hard time of the 90s made the population see the trees as a fuel and not as a source of medicine, wisdom, or shade. Ancient trees weren't torn down. Today, it's still happening. With the root of the trees in the air, the root of the human psyche starts to perish. In Seldom Blue from 2017, a tree and its reflection divide the composition in two. Glistening silver leaf and Turkish beading adorn the top edge of the paper, demarcating a frame that highlights the central image. Suggestive of water and amorphous clouds that traverse the landscape of the image, Prussian blue pigment is stretched and dripped across the paper to achieve horizontal bands of gradient color. The Double Existence from 2018 is a sculpture that presents viewers with an artificial pigeon and blood-red spools of thread. Indirectly evoking Strindberg's celebrated play Miss Julie, in which a bird is killed, the surreal tableau is at once suggestive and indecipherable. Its strange, dreamlike pairing is ultimately reflective of Bray's deep fascination with the metaphysical, his belief in Strindberg's words, that man leads a double existence, that imaginations, fantasies, and dreams possess a reality. Tree on a Leaden Sky from 2017 
features a solitary tree against a somber wash of gray. The work on paper again reflects the artist's experience of returning to Cuba in 2014. Shocked by the deforestation of his native country, the mournful imagery of tree on a leaden sky is a lament for this large-scale destruction. Ultimately concerned with the human psyche, every life is a fire, inferno drawings, and a drift, perform a powerful alchemy, imbuing humble materials with a transformative cultural and spiritual charge. Mining religious traditions, scientific histories, philosophy, and fiction, together the series explore questions about human existence.